We know the Bible mentions demons many times, but what exactly are they? Are they fallen angels or a coded reference to something else? Here's what the Bible says about their origins and powers. Nowhere in the Bible are fallen angels specifically identified as demons, but by combining the references to Satan, demons, and angels. Early Christian exegetes spoke of demons as angels who, when Satan fell, changed from good to bad, as they followed him. They are also said to be subject to him. But are they? Discover what the Bible says about demons, fallen angels, and Satan, as well as the roles they play in God's redemptive plan. The Bible has much to say about demons, and we find them spoken of as demons in all four of the Gospels. The Gospels mention them concerning Jesus writing people of them, Matthew 8, 28, Mark 5, 15, Luke 4, 35. Or the Jewish religious leaders claiming Jesus had a demon, John 8, 49. Synonyms the Bible uses to describe demons include those employed by Paul in Ephesians 6, wealth, the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Other terms include unclean spirits, Matthew 12, 43, legion, Luke 8, 30, a spirit of divination, Acts 16, 16, evil spirits, Luke 7, 21, and the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, 41. At times, as seen in the Acts passage, the demons are called by what they attempt to do. Most mentions of the term demon occur in the New Testament. However, they are present in the Old Testament as well, as seen in Leviticus 17, 7, Deuteronomy 32, 17, and Psalm 10637. In other parts of the Old Testament, some evil beings are called gods. 1 Samuel 28, 13, Isaiah 8, 19, and are acknowledged as demonic spirits because they are linked with the deceased. Another Old Testament term commonly referred to as a demon is Azazel. Leviticus 16, 8, 10, 26. As followers, and we all follow something or someone. We emulate our leader. As Christians, Jesus Christ is our leader. He is our Lord. Revelation 17, 14, the author and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2. One of our main goals is to become like him. Romans 8, 29, 1 John 3, 2. Demons take a different course because they are fallen angels, those who fell with Satan when he was banished from God's presence in heaven. Revelation 12, 3. Being fallen angels, demons are spiritual beings. Matthew 10, 1. They are also enemies of God. Revelation 12, 9. With limited power over men. Revelation 16, 14. When Satan fell, one-third of the angels in heaven followed him, and they serve him to their ultimate demise. Barry Cooper states, Demons are angels who fell with Satan, who was, of course, an angel himself. They were those who had taken sides with Satan in his rebellion against God. Talk about being on the wrong side of history. Matthew 25, 41 tells us what happens to demons. They will depart as cursed and be placed in the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Twice in the Old Testament, fallen men are referenced in the context of Nephilim, the children of the sons of God and daughters of man. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old men of renown. 
The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Genesis 6, 1, 6. The Book of Enoch, a non-canonical ancient Jewish text included in the Apocrypha, contains detailed accounts of fallen angels, their interactions with humans, and their punishment. Biblical scholars do not consider the Book of Enoch to be scripture. A book must be considered God's inspired and written word to qualify as scripture. However, it has still historically contributed to society's understanding of angels and demons. The fallen angels presented by Enoch are often referred to as the Watchers. Here are some key points about them from the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch describes a group of 200 angels who descended to earth to take human wives, taught forbidden knowledge to humanity, and corrupted mankind. These angels are led by a chief named Azazel. The main sin of the Watchers was their illicit relations with human women, resulting in the birth of hybrid beings called the Nephilim. As a result of their actions, the Watchers were condemned by God. Some were imprisoned in the depths of the earth, while others were bound with chains until the Day of Judgment. Enoch, the protagonist of the Book of Enoch, is said to have interceded on behalf of the fallen angels, pleading for their forgiveness. However, his pleas were not successful, and the angels were punished. And thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our latest video updates.